Hello and a very warm welcome to The Real Home Show. Coming up, how to get the design of your kitchen extension just right, our fail-safe guide to choosing a mattress in a box, the six gadgets that every keen traveller needs, interior design trends for hallways, plus we're giving away a Berico front door worth up to £3,000. busy planning your dream kitchen extension then here's the latest installment in our extensions made easy series to help you get the design just right probably the most important part of planning an extension is getting the design just right that's going to mean you get a lovely space like this that you want to live in for years to come today I'm joined by Nick from architects resi to talk you through the design process a little bit so Nick when I come to you as a homeowner what do I need to tell you to get a good extension um, I think what clients typically do is come, come to us and say that I need more space, um, I've got a growing family, um, I want to transform and connect it to the garden. So there's a, a kind of a diverse set of requirements more than anything. Um, what we tend to do at Resi and, and as an architectural team is basically start digging a bit deeper into that. So there's some key things we need to understand. So budget is important, that drives the design sometimes. Um, and also timing is a really important factor. And what is the benefit of having an architect? What do you bring to the party? Uh, experience. Um, obviously, with a residential portfolio, your architect would have been through it, um, learned a lot about the kind of pitfalls and the problems. Um, they come with expertise around I don't know, things like orientation, uh, planning policy um, is important, uh, understanding what the design implications may have on um, construction costs and budget. So I think the, the expertise is, is vital um, to really guide you and, and give you that kind of reassurance around some of the decisions you're making. It helps you understand what you're doing and, and, and the impact of that, basically. Now I love having a little scribble on the floor plan of my home and, and drawing an extension. Is that a big no-no? Do you want me to already tell you what I want or is it good to listen to your expertise? It's a good starting point because it allows us to understand your objective again, really. Um, but what we would do, and, and I think what we do at Resi basically, is focus on that and come up with an idea to make sure we are accommodating your brief and, and being flexible. Um, but also coming up with a second option, which really nails down into our creative minds and, and, and understanding the spaces and uh, collaborating that with the extraction of your brief and, and coming up with another idea for you to digest. And I think when you're engaging in an architect, we really want them to utilise that expertise. That's where you get value for money. So at what stage in the design journey do I need to know kind of where my plug sockets are going to be? What sort of door handles I want? Is that right at the start? Um, no, typically not. I think what the first step is to understand function, circulation, the space you're trying to create, and then your architect will then advise on planning and deal with planning matters, permitted development rights or planning policy. Um, I wouldn't spend time or money on that level of detail because the planners will dictate how big it's going to be, so we'll budget and, and then look at that as post-planning or when you're starting to move into the more detailed design, building regulations, structural engineering and, and construction phase basically. Um, so a little tip really is that once you've got planning, you don't need to necessarily spend money on your architect producing that level of detail. Um, a builder can support you on site but you can also engage in you know, kitchen designers who will demonstrate what the space could be kitted out like and how it's going to look, 3D visuals. Keep your outlay, your cost under control and, and spend the money on the, the benefit of the architect and their kind of network of contacts basically. So if I come to you and I'm very fixed that I've got not that much money to spend and I don't want big roof lights and I don't want big glazed windows because that's all going to cost money, how can you kind of put your expertise to maybe persuade me that I should do those things because it's worth the investment? We first of all want to understand why. So if you're a developer or you're going to stay there for six months and you want to kind of flip the property or it's a quick fix, then we kind of will work, and understand, work with you and understand that. If you um, feel that's the best design solution, then we would try and push back and say why and then come up with some ideas for you to consider to try and get you to change your mind. Um, also advise you that where you spend money on openings and connections to the garden will create more of a wow factor and in, in the future um, how likely is someone else going to want to move into that environment and, and pay you the asking price for example. So there's a couple of things that we would consider there. 
Brilliant, thank you Nick. Really useful advice there on the design process. Come back next time, we're going to be talking about planning permission and building regulations and I promise it's going to be a little bit more interesting than it sounds. Now unless you've been hiding under a rock, you'll have seen that mattresses in a box are being advertised everywhere these days. Here's our guide to buying a mattress that you've never actually tried. Now stick around for our advice on travel gadgets and that front door giveaway. Five years ago, when you needed a new mattress, you'd have to head to a bedroom showroom, spend way too much time lying on the waterbed, and then maybe try five or ten mattresses, lie there awkwardly, and try and guess which one you'd like to sleep on. Then it would arrive in a massive package, you'd have to lumber upstairs with it, and you'd finally have your new mattress. But those days are long gone, and it's all thanks to mattresses in a box. You've probably seen brands like Simba, Eve, Emma, and Casper all over your social media feed. Now these are mattresses that come vacuum packed, in a small box and the benefits are that they're easier to maneuver than a huge flat mattress. They also cut out the middleman so there aren't any showrooms, you cannot go and try them, your home becomes the showroom. So what they all have is a trial period. It ranges from 90 days through to 365 days and the great thing is that you can try the mattress in your own home. If you don't like them, they come and they either replace them for a different model or they take them away and give you a refund and then they recycle them or they donate them to a good cause. So we thought we'd get a mattress in a box and what we've got here is the Simba Hybrid. So this one is a king size, it's come from Benson's for Beds and it comes in at $679.99. Now what you're getting is a hybrid mattress which essentially means you're getting a layer of springs and then a layer of memory foam on top. There's various different options, you can have different thicknesses but they're all essentially a medium firm mattress. So as long as that's what you like then you should be onto a winner whichever of the options you choose. So, it comes in the box, you do need two people to move it still. So it's brilliant if you live in a flat because look at the compact size of this compared to a huge king size mattress, but it is very heavy. It's got handles, so Matt, our cameraman and I, managed to get it upstairs quite easily. And then it says that unpacking it is a one person job. And what you do is you take it out of the box, unroll it, unpackage it, and then it will rise up to its actual depth over the next 72 hours. It's safe to sleep on after about six hours, but you will notice that it keeps getting bigger for the next couple of days. Whew. Okay, so my new mattress is in situ. It was a one person job, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm sweating a bit, it was hard work, but now it's here, let's hope it was worth it. As I said, it'll continue to rise over the next 72 hours, and then hopefully I'll have a brilliant bed. So now I've done this, I've had a look at one. What are the real benefits of a mattress in a box? So number one, if you live in a flat or a townhouse, you've got lots of stairs to get up, this is undoubtedly easier to manoeuvre than a big mattress that you've got to try and bend around corners. So that's definitely benefit number one. But for me, the really big selling point is that home trial period. So I've got 100 days to sleep on this and decide whether it really is the right mattress for me, which sure beats that two minute awkward lie down in a superstore. Now this one, the Simba Hybrid, it retails at $679.99 for a king size, and that's from Benson's for beds. But there are foam mattresses that start at just a few hundred pounds, all the way up to mattresses in a box with the hybrid system, so that's springs and foam, and those can be over a thousand pounds or more. So how do you know which one to choose? Well, if you head to realhomes.com forward slash TV, we've produced a handy comparison table for you. So in that, you'll find everything from what the mattresses are made of, to the composition of them, to the trial period that you get, which ranges up to a full year, and you'll also find the prices of them. So we've done a king size bed for your comparison. So take a look, we've got all of the leading brands, Emma, Eve, Casper, Simba, and Otty, and then you can decide which one is the right one for you. The only downside, I didn't get to lie on one of those water beds. Now you might well have beautifully decorated rooms in your house, but if your hallway is looking a little sorry for itself, it'll let them down. Here's our interior design expert, Cyan Astley from Make It More Just, with the three key hallway design trends for 2020. Your hallway is the perfect place to wow guests when they enter your home. You need to create a welcoming space that looks great, but that can also cope with the demands of modern life. Here are three key trends for 2020 that are both practical and pretty. I work on the BBC show Your Home Made Perfect and we've seen lots of homeowners fed up with messy hallways full of coats and shoes who also want useful storage that's unfussy and clever. Before you start looking at storage options, you need to measure the space you have and decide exactly what you want to store. 
Do you want pegs at different heights for adults and children? Are you willing to only have seasonal items in the hallway and store everything else in plastic boxes in the garage or loft? Many people are opting for bespoke storage, either by contacting a joiner or using MDF or plywood to build recessed, under stairs or other fitted storage. If you need to save money, you can buy off the shelf storage from somewhere like Ikea and then clad around it to make it look bespoke. The second trend we're seeing is being bold and adventurous. Hallways really don't have to be boring. Patterned floor tiles are a great option as they're practical for dirty shoes and offer a modern twist on a traditional style. Tie the pattern you choose in with your overall design budget, but go a step braver than you normally would. Hallways are relatively small, so the cost of really beautiful tiles wouldn't be too much. I love Mandarin Stone and Mosaic Del Sur, but companies like Tops and Tile Giant offer really affordable ranges too. And don't forget the stairs. A runner with a spot or a stripe pattern will look great. And you can sand or paint the remainder of the staircase, like I've done, which will help keep costs down. The final trend that's not going anywhere is displaying gorgeous artwork. We've got Instagram Queen Lisa Dawson to thank for the gallery wall, of course, and it's just as popular as ever. Mix up the shapes and the sizes of the frame you choose, combining graphic slogans, photographs and prints. I like to buy artwork from makers markets and secondhand fairs and then have it framed locally, but you can get cheap prints from online retailers like King & McGaw and bargain frames from Ikea or maybe Wilco. You can even frame postcards or wallpaper. If you love it, display it. And make sure you check out Muck & Brass's innovative spray painted art. You could DIY your own, but please don't accidentally spray anything expensive. If you're anything like me, having a holiday or two to look forward to is the only way to get through this time of year. Now, if you're away from home regularly, here's our tech expert Verity Burns with the tech that'll help keep your house safe and secure while you're away. Do you spend more time away from home than you do there? Whether you love a UK mini break or an exotic fly and flop holiday, here are the five gadgets that will make any traveller's life that little bit easier. First up, and while we might be off enjoying ourselves, we don't want, shall we say, the less savoury types knowing that our house is empty. Smart lighting is great for this, as it allows you to control your lights when you aren't at home, as well as set schedules for lights to go on and off to give the impression that someone is in. The Philips Hue system has to be one of the best ways of doing it. You'll need to invest in a starter pack. There's one that includes a hub and two bulbs for just under £50 and then you can add individual bulbs into your system as you need them for around £15 each. Once you've got the system set up, you can control it all from your smartphone to give you peace of mind that your house isn't sitting in darkness. Secondly, and sticking with the security theme, you're probably going to want to install a smart security camera or two to watch over your home while you aren't there, and which will send you notifications to your smartphone if it's spotted something it shouldn't do. There are loads of great options out there, but among my favourites is the Arlo Pro 2, which comes in a two camera pack for around £450. The cameras are entirely wireless and weatherproof, so you can put them wherever you want. And they come with a hub unit that plugs directly into your router. This creates a stable Wi-Fi connection between the cameras, but can also fire out a siren of 100 decibels to scare off any intruders, should you spot them. A cheaper and arguably more stylish option comes in the form of the Hive View, which is £179 and offers notifications to your phone when it hears noise or spots movement in its 130 degree field of vision. Its app is easy to use and, as you'd expect, it works seamlessly with the rest of the Hive ecosystem of lighting and heating. Both Arlo and Hive require monthly subscriptions to get the best of them though, which starts from just a few pounds a month. Next up, let's talk video doorbells. These are great for holiday makers to get installed, as they not only double up as a security camera for the front of your house, but they basically enable you to answer your door wherever you are in the world, using your phone. That means you can advise delivery people where to leave packages in a safe location and speak to anybody else who turns up at your door. Something like the Ring Video Doorbell 2 can be installed wirelessly and will set you back about £120. Now for some tech that can help you out on your travels. Keeping an eye on your luggage as you fly between countries is handy in case you get unexpectedly separated. Something like the Tracky Safe Luggage Tracker costs about £50 and slips inside your bag, offering you the ability to pinpoint your bag's location via GPS across 90 countries. 
If it's a bag you carry with you, you can set up an alert that will notify you if you're about to leave it behind. While TrackySafe's light sensor can also let you know if someone has been rooting around inside your bag when they shouldn't be. Finally, any traveller worth their salt knows that noise cancelling headphones are an absolute must when flying here, there and everywhere. And Sony's WH-1000XM3s are among the best you can buy. As well as offering outstanding music quality, their ability to block out travel noise and the chatter of your fellow passengers is superb. They can even tell what it is you're doing, be that walking, sat still or travelling, and will adjust their noise cancellation to best suit your environment though you can of course override that if you wish. They're £329 and could well be one of the best investments you'll make for your travel bag. Now, researching those has given me a bad case of wanderlust, so if you don't mind, I'm off to book my next holiday. For more of Verity's no-nonsense advice on smart homes, just head to realhomes.com forward slash technology. It's almost the end of this show, so it's time for our latest brilliant competition. We've teamed up with Berico to give away a bespoke timber front door, available in six styles and 16 different colours and worth up to £3,000. To be with a chance of winning, click on the top article at realhomes.com forward slash TV and answer this simple multiple choice question. What's the name of our interior design expert? You've got until midnight on February the 27th to enter, so good luck. I'll be back in two weeks' time with advice on planning permission for extensions, the five gadgets that every busy family needs, and interior design trends for bathrooms. In the meantime, head to realhomes.com forward slash TV, and don't forget to pick up a copy of Real Homes magazine. Happy homemaking!